Cool. Um, so yeah, like you said, my name is Corey Woodcox. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I tweet a lot, and I'm usually loud and annoying. Um, sometimes I'm funny, though. Um, Does your sprinkler system tweet? <laughs> no, but it should, and it might very soon. Um, that's my GitHub. There's my email. I love to hear from people. Um, I, anytime you want to send me an email or tweet at me, anything like that, more than happy to talk, more than happy to help out. Um, I work for the OC Tanner Company, so I have to plug them because they've helped me out with a lot of this stuff. Um, if any of you guys work with Ruby on Rails, that's what we do primarily is maybe if I can get my slide to advance. Come on, buddy. Oh, it does this all the time. Why does it do this? All right, well, I'll advance them manually then. Um, we work with Ruby on Rails. We do automated testing. We use AngularJS. We use Heroku. We use GitHub. We deploy like 10 times a day, continuous deployment on a single project. Um, basically, we do totally awesome stuff. Um, and you should come work for us. So if you know Ruby, come talk to me. Um, we are hiring like crazy. Um, the next thing you should know about me is that I have exactly zero experience in electronics engineering. Um, I have no idea what any of this stuff does. Basically, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, please ask questions. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are smarter than me in this realm. Um, and I would love to hear um, what you have to say about it. Um, I have a bad habit of taking on projects that I know nothing about. Um, I replaced the clutch in my truck. Um, don't know a thing about cars. Um, now I do, but before I didn't. Um, so why did I do this exactly? There's, there's not exactly a full-on reason for it, but the main reason was is that home automation is freaking cool. It's so awesome. Um, there's things that people do in home automation and companies that work in home automation right now that are charging a fortune for these things. Um, I don't, you guys probably came to some of Clint's session, um, but uh, I don't think it should be super expensive like that. Um, I don't think that they should have to, you should have to invest in a $15,000 system just to get your lights to turn off when you leave the house. Um, I think that we should be able to do this ourselves. Um, it's really fun to build these things. Um, this took me a couple of weeks of dinking around and pretending like I knew what I was doing. And it was, it, it, just, it was really easy. Um, the most common s device that you use every single day that deals with electronics, electricity, and things like that, I, I'm guessing. But you use it every day. It's in every building that you're in. Anybody have any idea what it is? No. Light switch. Simplest thing in the world. Two contacts. They hold a magnet holds them together when it's in the on and it's up. Um, Probably the simplest thing in the world, and you can replicate it electronically with that little guy right there. Um, it's really, really useful. Um, there are so many things that I can do. Right now, I, ha I have a pond in my backyard as well, and I'm taking this tonight, actually. Um, I'm going to disassemble this whole thing. I'm gonna, it, it loses water every once in a while. It, about every day, it'll lose about an inch. And so I'll have to go fill it back up or else the filter box, the pump runs dry, waterfall stops, the pump seizes, and then I have to buy a new pump. And it happens all the time, and I hate it. So I'm going to go take this and put a little um, water level sensor in there, turn on water whenever the water level drops below a certain point so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, basically, home automation is what you all, it was my secret love, and you guys all secretly love it. Because, yeah, just a float. A float sensor, electronic float sensor. Um, basically, automation is your secret love. That's why you're here. That's why you like open source software. That's why you like writing code is because automation is what you like to do. Um, and it's not really a secret because I am an extraordinarily lazy person. I don't like to do things over and over. Repetitive tasks are annoying. Um, I like it when things are easy, simple. I like it when things are fast. That's why I program in Ruby, because Ruby is fast, right? No, it's not. And <laughs> I like it when things um, get out of my way and do what they're supposed to do, and that's it. Um, one of the great examples of those things is Nest. We talked about the thermostat just a second ago. Um, Nest is easy to use. 
Um, it's got its big old thing on there, and it tells you exactly what it's going to do. It's a little gradient, you turn the knob. I mean, it's super easy. But it gets super complicated if you want it to. It's simple, but it's still super easy to use, and there's about eight different ways to use it. You can use it with your iPhone app. You can use it from the, the web app. You can use it from your iPad. There's 90 different ways to program it. But it still remains simple, which is key. Um, it's fast, and it stays out of the way. Um, there's a thing that they call the Nest Moment. I've read about it on the internet a few times. I don't have a Nest yet. Um, but when you go to adjust it, and it does the adjustment for you because it knows that around this time you usually turn it up a little bit because you want it warmer in your house or you turn it down a little bit because you want it cooler in your house. You go and you stand up next to it and it goes, oh, just kidding, I already did this for you. That's cool, right? That kind of automation is stuff that's not that hard and we can do it with this type of th these types of things. And then we have this lovely thing. <laughs> this little guy is my nemesis. I hate it. Um, no, this is straight out of my house. Uh, sitting in my garage right now. There's a lovely little thing right here. It says date code 893. So almost 20 years ago, this was manufactured. Um, and it still runs the sprinklers in my house. Um, it's clunky. Every single time you turn that knob, it literally clunks. It goes clunk, 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 and it's scary. Um, it's super annoying. It forgets what time it is whenever it loses power, but it doesn't forget the schedule. OK. So then when I turn it back on, it decides that it's midnight. And then in an hour, an hour after it turns on, gets power back, it turns the sprinklers on. Don't ask me how that works. It's so slow. I have to hold that button right there for like eight days straight to set the time when it forgets what time it is. You just sit there and hold it and watch it go brrrr, and then you miss and you have to go around again. It's a huge pain and it's old. So it's old, right? I mean, things, things have to have gotten better with this type of technology, right? That's its replacement. It's for sale at Home Depot right now. Looks just like that. And it does nothing different. I took that two weeks ago at Home Depot and that. They all look the same. They all do the same thing. And they all suck at it. It's terrible. Um, so how do I set this up? Well, it's really, really easy to set one of these up. All you have to do is watch the 10-minute instructional video that came with your system. Um, you can look them up on YouTube. They're hilarious. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I hate the way this works. I hate it. There's nothing smart about the way that these work. Reasonable defaults are what makes uh, what everyone uses anyway. There's no reason. There's, there's things that I don't have to do. The time of day, I can get that with a network connection in 30 milliseconds. The location, I can get that decently accurately, just a few seconds. I can get it dead accurate if I'm using my smartphone. The weather, something that I can get with my network connection. And all we're really doing with this is we're switching on 24 volts, turning it on and off. So super easy, right? So let's go wire up an Arduino, right? Wrong. We don't want to do that. Um, Arduino is powered with C, and C isn't fun. I don't like C, except it kind of is fun. But Ruby is more fun. Um, this would be made a ton easier with a computer running Linux. This would be made a ton easier with Ruby, and that's why I chose Raspberry Pi. Um, Raspberry Pi has a ton of advantages, even though it's a little OP for this. Um, there's a three and a half millimeter stereo output and an HDMI port. Um, don't really need those, but um, it does the job quite nicely, actually. We get networking for free. There's a little. <laughs> that would work. We could we could we could show some video of your, your sprinklers running. That would be nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bellagio. There we go. I like this. I like where this is going. Um, you get networking for free. There's a Cat5 jack right there. Uh, Ethernet port. Um, you don't need any Arduino modules or anything like that for um, networking. It's a Unix system, and we all know how that works. 
And so um, we get Ubuntu. We have native Ruby. We don't have to compile it down to something else. Um, we get NTPD, so we know what time it is all the time. And we get Unix sockets. We get everything we love from Linux. And it really only costs us about six seconds of boot time. So it's kind of a good trade. Um, there's a guy named Austin Vance. And he works at Pivotal Labs. Um, and he gave a talk at RubyConf in just this past year. Um, was it 2012 or 2013? I don't remember. Anyway. Um, he said, yeah, it was October 2012. And he told us about Arduino, how it's really great for small repetitive tasks. It's perfect for reading sensors. It's perfect for regulating and normalizing your IOs and different things like that. But it, and it's really good at responding to an output from a computer. Um, but it's very, very limited when it's isolated. Um, there are projects all over the internet that tell you how to use Arduinos for random things. But 90% of them require you to have a laptop hooked up to it. And that's crappy. I don't want to leave this sitting around because I like to play StarCraft. And I, yeah, it's, it just doesn't work that well. But it, so it works best when it's paired with a computer. And, but we could use a Raspberry Pi, which is a full computer, to control an Arduino. So you keep the package small. You have an Arduino sitting on top of here. And it, they, they talk back and forth to control each other. It, it would work really, really well. Um, now, Gary Bernhardt, um, he's a, a Ruby programmer. He's pretty well known, and he's pretty hilarious. Um, he retweeted something like three days before I gave this talk um, at Mountain West Ruby Conference. And he said, it says, the reason we get excited about software and libraries and such is that we assume that they work, which is false. None of this stuff works, right? Um, so do I have a working example of a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino talking to each other? No. Sorry. <laughs> do I have a working example of something? Yes, I do. So let's play with this for a second. Um, this is your standard electronically controlled sprinkler valve. Um, Could it move over there? Yeah, it can. Ooh, that would be awesome. I like this idea. That is cool. So we just have to move your Can we just scoot there? the whole table? That'd be awesome. Sure. Oh no, I'm gonna have to break the power. Well, maybe not. It doesn't move. I tried earlier. Ugh. I'm just going to scoot the whole table for now. Yeah, I'll move the controller in a second. Which button is it? It's the dot camera. <coughs> OK. And then, is it, I think it's powering on automatically. Yeah, I turned it on. You just need this to stay here. Oh, look at that. How fancy is that? Um, I'll move it right here. Ha ha ha. Okay, cool. How sweet is that, man? That's awesome. Okay, so this right here, it's a standard sprinkler valve, um, and it's got two leads. Um, I've connected them with your standard butt splice connectors. Really simple, bottom of Radio Shack. Um, and to this, how does this move? 24 volt Radio Shack transformer right there. Um, it's getting its power from a standard computer cable that I spliced into its input leads with butt splices just like that. And this is where the magic happens right here. Oh, is it upside down? Why has it got to be upside down? <laughs> How do I use this? I just don't even know. Does it zoom? It does, but I don't know how. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, look at that. But it doesn't zoom the way I want it to. It's not going to go the other way. Doesn't help much. 
Okay, we'll go like this. So this is a, can we see it? Nope, we can't. It is a sharp 8 amp, 250 volt solid state relay, also called an optical isolator. Um, it takes a 3 volt input, which comes straight out of the Raspberry Pi in there. Let's see if I can do this. Zooming, zooming, zooming. Focus, Daniel san. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, so this little guy is called a pie cobbler. And it tells you each one of these little pins is coming off of that header on the Raspberry Pi. And so <clears throat> what happens is this ribbon cable transfers all this to the breadboard, and then we can do cool things with it like this. So this, I had this hooked up for eight relays, but I only used one for simplicity's sake. Um, <clears throat> what we do is these are the AC leads right here, over here. And they are getting switched by the, the two pins on this little guy. Can I make you focus manually, please? So are you using that to rectify the output from the transformer? Uh, it's just to switch it, yeah. Oh, okay. And these two leads are digital, and these two are for the AC. And so you jam this little guy in right here, and you <coughs> can switch this valve on and off, like this. Let's make this bigger. Big enough for you? OK. So we're going to use an interactive Ruby shell, because I like Ruby the best, because it's the best. Um, <clears throat> and there's a library called GPIO that we can load. And this live demo was supposed to be a lot cooler, because last time I did it, I had a garden hose. And it was plugged into here. And I actually turned water off and on. But UVU wasn't down with that. So you guys get the boring version. Sorry. Pin 7 is the pin that the relay is sitting on right now. Um, this is super easy. It gives you an object back. And then I can tell that object to turn on. And it clicks the, th the relay on. And water flows. It's supposed to be a lot cooler, but I don't have any water. Sorry, guys. Um, <coughs> and you can turn it off, and the valve will close back up. Um, <clears throat> there are other neat things you can do with this. this is, all this is doing is taking a standard Linux pipe, Unix pipe. If we go over here to sys class. GPIO LS, you have, so GPIO 4, the gem, the Ruby library is there to make the pins look the same on the different revisions of Raspberry Pi. So on this board, apparently, it's GPIO 4. But you can send, if you go into GPIO 4, you'll see that it has a direction out, it has Oh, that's a directory. Or it has a value, 0. And it has, um, oh, and then the active low is um, what its current state. So I can say cat value, or cat 1 to value. Um, what? <laughs> oh, wait, that's why. My bad. No. What? I've done this before. Hmm. 
Well, it works in Ruby. <laughs> Live code demos never go perfectly, right? Oh, you are correct. Yeah, you need to do this. Dash S. We'll just do this. How about that? There it goes. See? Told you it was possible. So that's all it's doing, is writing to a file. And the Raspberry Pi has abstracted that out. So you can do that. The other cool thing is you can flip the directions on those pins. So all you have to do to get another pin is say, um, where did export go? There it is. So you can say echo 17 to export, and then echo out to GPIO 17 slash direction, echo 1 to value. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. And there should be another light on. Hey, look at that. The red one's on now. Um, GPIO with Raspberry Pi is super cool, and it's super easy. There's so many different things that you can do with it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, and you can do inputs too. You can switch it to in, and then you can read that value file. It gets constantly updated um, by the, the system, the GPIO libraries. Um, it's super easy. Um, yeah. So, how do we get all this stuff? How do we build one of these things? Um, I have a shopping list right there. Um, if you go to coreywoodcox.com and slash sprinklers, there's a shopping list. There's the beginnings of a tutorial. Still working on it. It's kind of a pain, and it's hard to do in your time off. Um, but the shopping list total price is probably about 100 bucks, maybe a little bit less. It's not even over 100 bucks. I'm pretty sure of that. Building this board, including the wood and the pipe and everything, I spent 110. And that's because I had to buy a new one of these because I fried it, because I don't know what I'm doing. <coughs> um, so yeah, these types of things are super, super easy. And I would love your guys' help with working on this stuff. Um, I plan on making this open source so that we can all use it. So yeah. You guys have any questions for me? Mm -hmm. The code um, that I'm writing, most of it's published. Um, this GPIO gem is published. It's not even written by me. It's written. I've contributed a couple things to it. I'm actually rewriting my own because there's a couple of really weird things that happen with it. Um, but the code is all out on GitHub. So if GPIO is the protocol that runs. Yes, general purpose I/O. Arduino does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just voltages on and off is all it is. Uh, yeah, it? it's the kernel modules comes with the base Raspberry Pi system. Um, if you get get a Raspberry Pi, you'll download a distribution of Linux called Raspbian. It's just Debian with some Raspberry specific kernel modules, um, and it has GPIO control already set up. And the tutorial that I'm writing has that. I believe it's up. I'm not sure if it's already there. So or not. when you were on the command line, you were interacting with the GPIO directly. Right. So there's just a kernel driver sitting in there in sys, and you can talk to those as if they were dev block Ruby devices. Just has Ruby, Ruby binds, right. It's, it's, all it does is shell out and do the same thing. It's not doing anything special. Okay. It's just It wraps up the activation of the pin and setting the direction and all that stuff. It do, wraps all that up for you, so you don't, can do it in one quick step instead of doing it over and over. No, that's going over Ethernet. There is a, um, a Wi-Fi module for the Raspberry Pi. I don't own it. Um, it's just a USB. Plug it right in. Load the kernel module. Starts right up. Um, Wi-Fi for that is super easy, like I said. So. What if, so every new incarnation, or every incarnation, the first incarnation of a new technology is always retrogressive. 
So I was thinking about this, and what if the next step is you just have the water in your pipes lying all the time, and you control your sprinklers all the time? <laughs> that would be awesome. But it'd have to be wireless. But yeah, the and your sprinklers are in the ground. The sprinklers, getting wireless to sprinklers would be interesting. Getting power to all the sprinklers would be interesting too. Well, you could you could have some sort of flywheel or something that powered a battery when, when the water is going by. True. You know, I'm just thinking about if the sprinklers in the ground, it's going to really attenuate the wireless signal. Right. Unless you have the antenna right on the top. Or something. Yeah, but that gets really expensive because I run over sprinklers with my lawnmower all the time. <laughs> <laughs> True, true, but I mean, I have to go to the store and buy new ones every single year. That's what Clint was talking about with the, like the Z Wave mesh system, then the signal wouldn't have to be as powerful because they would all just talk to each other. They'd only have to reach the next sprinkler the next hop, not all the way back. Yeah, XB has some really cool technology with that right now. And I think it's Clint that's working on the open source alternative to XP. I'm not sure, but XP wireless is cool. Uh, I, would, I would love to get um, wireless controllers for the valves so that instead of having wires running to each control box, I would have wireless control of them and just have a, once a single power one to go out there. Then I wouldn't have to run new wires when I decided I wanted new valves, because that's pretty terrible. I kind of hate that. <coughs> Yeah, it's also against code. <laughs> right. Right. They don't like you to do that at all. So, yeah. Any other questions? So you actually set this up? Mm -hmm. Water your sprinklers? Mm -hmm. I have a different, another Raspberry Pi and a better breadboard. Because once you have it plugged into the computer, your sprinkler job is just uh, jail script. Yeah, I use, well, I use a Ruby script, and it uses Rufus Scheduler. So I can just an event machine. So I can just it sets up cron cron style scripts or every style scripts or in five minutes do this type type scripts. Yeah. You mentioned the possibility of hooking the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino. Uh, mm -hmm. And what would be some advantages or gains? Um, the Raspberry Pi only has eight pins. Only has eight GPIO pins, and I'm <coughs> working on, working with a guy right now who has. 15 zones in his yard. Um, and so he wants me to set one of these up for him. And so I figured I'd use it as a test bed for my Arduino system. So my approach for that is an Arduino with the eight pins going straight to the Arduino. And the Arduino has 100 and some odd GPIO availabilities or pins. And I could set an 8 bit mask on the eight pins. So I could just send it binary this one, this one, and this one. and um, in parallel, and it would turn on certain stations with that. So that would just increase the number of uh, pins that you would support with that. Um, you could also do that over a network, um, but networking gets kind of heavy and, and annoying with Arduino. You have to write a lot of code for it. The code, for, uh, the code that I would burn onto an Arduino for responding to an 8-bit mask like that would be a lot simpler. So I'd, I like to do it that way. But I don't have that working yet. So I tried. Sorry, guys. I tried. I really did. Anybody else? Do you know if they have like, C Wave controllers for the valves? I don't. Um, I know it would be really simple to build, but again, they need power. So getting wires to why, the wires aren't going to go away anytime soon. It's not a small amount of power they're dealing with. This has, that's, it draws about an amp and a half when it first starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we could do it, that. Would work. Yeah. You just need, like I said, you need power. There's, a, it draws about an amp and a half when it first starts, and it goes down to about 700 milliamps while it's on. So, it's in, and it's 24 volts. It's not a small amount of power. Not like the Raspberry Pi, which runs on next to nothing, five volts and 800 milliamps if you push it. <laughs> Anybody else? Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys build stuff with it. <laughs>